JFT, just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for June the 8th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFT, and I will talk about yesterday's many market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded mixed against its uh, major peers on Monday during the Asian session Tuesday. It lost ground versus CHF and Euro while it gained against the Canadian dollar and the Aussie. It was found nearly unchanged against the pound, the yen and the Kiwi. Now the strengthening of the Swiss franc and the weakening of the risk-linked uh, Looney and Aussie suggest that financial markets traded in a risk of manner yesterday and today in Asia. However, shifting attention to the equity world, we see that the most major EU indices closed in positive waters, with the only exception being Germany's DAX, which slid 0.10%. Investors' morale is softened, uh, though, during the US session, with both the Dow Jones and the S&P 500 uh, sliding, and only Nasdaq ending positive, while uh, sentiment deteriorated uh, even further deteriorated even further during the Asian session um, today. Now, with uh, with no major events to drive the markets yesterday, neither any top tier event on today's agenda. We believe that uh, market participants uh, are likely to stay cautious ahead of Wednesday's uh, Bank of Canada and Thursday's uh, ECB meetings, and especially the US CPI's for May you out on Thursday as well. Lately, the main market theme has been the surging inflation around the globe and how this can affect central bank decisions uh, moving ahead. On Thursday, the US data are forecast to show that uh, both the headline and core CPI rates have continued to climb well above the Fed's target of 2%. In our view, the fact that underlying inflationary pressures are rising as well uh, raises questions as to whether the spike in headline inflation is due to transitory factors as the Fed initially supported. Now, with several policymakers arguing that they need to start discussing policy normalization at the upcoming gatherings, further acceleration in consumer prices may increase speculation that the commi for the committee acting sooner than previously thought and thereby result in a pullback in equities and other risk-linked assets. At the same time, the US dollar and other safe havens may strengthen. Now flying to Canada, inflation accelerated in both headline and core terms uh, there as well. However, Friday's weak employment report is likely to prevent Bank of Canada to reduce further uh, their bond purchases on Wednesday. We believe that after doing that at the prior uh, gathering, they can wait for now. In any case, an upbeat tone in the bank's statement, hinting that more tapering is in the works for the months to come, is likely to keep the Canadian dollar supported. Now returning to the Eurozone, things here are different. Although we saw headline inflation spiking notably higher, uh, the core rate stayed subdued. This means that indeed the rising headline inflationary pressures are due to transitory factors. Having that in mind, and also that uh, several ECB policymakers continue to support an extra loose uh, policy stance, we don't expect this bank to discuss quantitative easing tapering uh, at all uh, this week. Therefore, if this is the case, we will focus on the updated economic projections and hints as to whether the recovery is satisfying enough. As uh, for today's events, during the European trading, Germany's ZW survey for June is due to be released. The current conditions index is forecast to have risen to minus 28 from minus 40.1, while the expectations one is anticipated to have inched up to 85.3 from 84.4. 
Eurozone's final GDP for the first quarter is also coming out alongside the final employment change for the quarter. As it is usually the case, the final prints are expected to confirm their preliminary estimates. Later in the day, we get Canada's trade balance for April and the US jolts uh, job openings for the same month. Canada's uh, trade deficit is expected to have narrowed somewhat, while no forecasts are available for the US uh, jolts uh, number. As for the speakers, we have only one on today's agenda, and this is Bank of England Chief Economist Andy Haldane. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 7 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.